What's up everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of Da Vinci Cases. Alright, so the way this works is we've got a clinical case followed by a board style question. So we're going to go through the question stem, point out the relevant clinical findings, take a look at the question and the answer choices, and then kind of divert for a minute and go through the relevant concepts to answering the question. Then we'll come back and apply those concepts that we went over to answering the question. Alright, so for this case we've got a 71 year old man presenting to the primary care physician's office with shortness of breath and a dry cough that have been getting progressively worse over the last six months. So this is an elderly gentleman. He's got some shortness of breath, dry cough. Definitely want to be thinking about some lung pathology. You could also think cardiac too at this point. Uh, the things you could be thinking about are definitely you know a COPD type picture. Could be bronchitis. Uh, bronchitis is definitely chronic. Could be emphysema if he has risk factors. Uh, it could be some type of infection. At this point, it's six months. It's probably more like a chronic infection versus you know some acute pneumonia that the, the patient's developing. The other thing is definitely you know you don't want to rule out malignancy, especially in an older uh, patient like this, especially if they have risk factors. The thing is though, sometimes malignancy can just present asymptomatically, so you can't necessarily definitively go down that pathway. You kind of have to keep your differential broad. So let's see what else they give us. So physical exam is notable for diminished breath sounds in both lungs. Diminished breath sounds really just means they're just not moving air very well. It could be due to infection, it could be due to pulmonary edema, you know, for example, you can see this in patients with heart failure. Uh, it can be due to immune disorders, autoimmune disorders. Uh, you can also definitely see it in interstitial lung disease. Um, so it's kind of a non-specific finding. It, it just, you know, it does affect us that it's not a unilateral uh, pathology necessarily. It's affecting both lungs and it's impacting the ability of the lungs to uh, move air in and out. So we get a chest x-ray and it shows multiple small, smaller than one centimeter bilateral nodules. So it's on both sides in the upper lobes and then multiple bilateral hilar lymph nodes with eggshell calcifications. So these are some fairly specific findings. So you're seeing nodules predominantly in the upper lobes, both sides. These are smaller and there's not just a single one. If there's a single one on one side, that's definitely very concerning for malignancy. Um, that being said, though, this could be, you know, a more advanced malignancy potentially at this point where you see these bilateral nodules. You also see these uh, lymph nodes with these eggshell calcifications. This tends to make me feel like it's more of a interstitial lung disease picture or maybe even an autoimmune picture. Interstitial lung disease, such as a pneumoconiosis, that's where patients are, have prolonged exposure to inhaling uh, different mineral dust into the lungs. And remember, dust can include things like asbestos, coal dust, uh, silica, uh, beryllium, those types of things. If the patient has exposure to those types of things, that can build up in the lungs and give you these you know, nodules. It can cause calcification of lymph nodes and other th uh, things as well that we'll talk about. So interstitial lung disease would also work with uh, not being able to move air. Then again, you know, with nodules, you, you can't always rule out malignancy. Really, the definitive way, you know, you can get a CT and better characterize them, um, but the, really the defining moment will be a biopsy in that case if, if it's clinically indicated. So this patient has smoked one pack per day for 40 years, so definitely uh, at risk for malignancy, definitely at risk for COPD. He drinks six beers per day, so he's got uh, somewhat heavy alcohol use. He previously worked in a foundry, casting metal for 40 years. This is really important. We'll talk about this. You always, especially in these lung cases, you want to consider work history because certain uh, occupations, especially these craftsman type occupations or occupations that involve construction uh, or things like that or uh, involved in ships or, you know, use building pipes or roofing or those types of things. You always want to pay attention to those and know the different diseases those particular occupations put patients at risk for. So he's referred to a pulmonologist that performs a biopsy to confirm the diagnosis. So like I said, the way you're going to definitively find this is by doing a biopsy and seeing what it shows. So the question is, which of the following are the most likely findings from this patient's biopsy? So if you kind of peek at these, these don't sound like malignancy. You know, malignancy is more like a typical cell growth, mitotic figures, thing, dysplasia, things like that. The other thing is this just doesn't sound like a malignancy case. Uh, and again, you want you have to be in the confines of the question. So if we summarize what we found here, you know, it's an older man with progressively worsening dyspnea and dry cough, 
The exam was notable for diminished breath sounds in both lungs. The chest x-rays showed multiple nodules uh, in the upper lobes and bilateral hilar lymph nodes uh, with eggshell calcifications. He is a heavy smoker, but he did work in a foundry casting metal for 40 years. So he's definitely at risk for a pneumoconiosis, and we'll talk about which one specifically here in a second. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick break from the case right now to let you know that DaVinci Cases is brought to you by DaVinci Academy, which provides online video courses for the medical basic sciences. These courses are taught using a variety of teaching methods, including bullet point outlines, diagrams, radiology images, and chalk talks to explain the fundamental concepts. We then teach the application of those concepts to numerous clinical pearls that are frequently tested on medical school exams and the USMLE. Our video courses are available on our website, dviacademy.com, as monthly subscriptions starting at $9.99 per month. Each video course has a corresponding outline format textbook as well. You can find the link to our website in the description below. Also be sure to use the discount code DC20 to receive 20% off any of our video courses. Now back to the case. So if we talk about pneumoconiosis really briefly here, there's co-workers pneumoconiosis, there's silicosis, asbestosis, and borreliosis. So for each of these, there's a specific uh, mineral, like I was talking about, that these patients are exposed to. And then, like I was saying, there's specific occupations that particularly put a patient at risk for inhaling those uh, minerals over a period of time. So coal workers pneumoconiosis is pretty easy. It's coal dust. So these are going to be coal miners. The other thing is you can see this in patients that have lived in highly dense urban areas for a long period of time. And so they you know, are inhaling uh, coal in the air over a long period of time, so you can see it as well, but the classic, obviously, is the, is the coal miners. Silicosis is silica, or also quartz. Uh, you see this in patients that work in foundries, uh, patients that work in sandblasting, and then miners in general. Abscessosis, obviously asbestos. These are patients that have a long history of working in shipbuilding, roofing, plumbing. Uh, you don't see this as commonly anymore, but you know, in the early half of the 20th century and certainly the 19th century, there were buildings that were uh, built with insulation that contained a high amount of asbestos. Uh, so you'd, you'd see patients that lived in those types of buildings that were exposed or that were involved in constructing those buildings definitely uh, are at risk as well. Also, people that are involved in demolishing buildings, old buildings. That's also something that could tip you off. If their their job involves demolishing those types of buildings, they're definitely at risk for exposure to asbestos. Beryliosis is beryllium, and that's actually found in uh, patients who work in the aerospace industry and the nuclear industry. So you definitely, so if a patient worked in building airplanes or things like that for a long period of time, you definitely want to pay attention to that in the history the other thing is uh, location in the lungs can also be important. So as far as the, the upper lobes and then the lower lobes. So we'll abbreviate this UL and then LL. There's really three of the four of these that are upper lobes and then just one that's lower lobe. So you just remember that Asbestos is lower lobes, and then all the rest of these are upper lobe. So you just remember this, and then remember all of them are the other one, which would be upper lobe. And the, the kind of the core pathophysiology for these is really, it, it's there's certain, obviously, intricacies for each one. The, the general theme, though, is that, you know, obviously these particles or these minerals get inhaled over a long period of time. And there's an immune reaction. So the immune system recognizes, the body recognizes that these are foreign bodies and essentially tries to clear them or get rid of them or destroy them. The issue is, is the body isn't that great at clearing or destroying those and hence these build up over time and that's how we get these diseases. What happens is that you trigger, often the macrophages are trying to clear these up and what happens is it triggers uh, fibrosis, stimulation of fibroblasts and then deposition of either you know connective tissue or other proteinaceous material, which leads to fibrosis. And then eventually these patients develop interstitial lung disease, which is why they can't breathe as well, they're short of breath. I just wanted to use this uh, simple diagram to kind of illustrate what the chest x-ray findings. So we saw bilateral upper lobe nodules here, and then we saw these calcified hilar lymph nodes. Remember the hilum of the lung is essentially the region where the main bronchi come in, 
Also, the artery and the pulmonary artery and veins are coming in and out of these regions. It's kind of a hilum in any organ you see it. There's a hilum of the kidney and other organs where it's just an entry point where things are coming and going. Uh, there's also nerves coming in and out of here as well. But anyway, so you see these central or hilar lymph nodes like this that are calcified. And so these give off this kind of eggshell appearance. And it's because these the periphery or the rim of these is very dense on the x-ray, even what's called enhancement. Uh, to use radiology jargon, enhancement just means it's a little bit brighter. So you kind of see these, you, you can see where it kind of resembles an eggshell. And so that's kind of that appearance there. And then you see these upper lobe nodular opacities that are very small, typically less than a centimeter. They're often anywhere from one to 10 millimeters. And you see these on both sides. So these findings coupled together also kind of tri trip us off to silicosis, especially eggshell appearance. This is definitely kind of a buzzword for silicosis. In asbestos, you see kind of these peripheral plaques, these peripheral pleural plaques. That's more the kind of typical imaging finding you see in uh, asbestos. And those are really the two main ones that have very definitive kind of buzzword imaging findings to them. So given that, we're coming back to the question here. He worked in a foundry casting metal for 40 years. He's coming in with these nonspecific symptoms correlate with interstitial lung disease. He's got a dry cough. He's got shortness of breath. He's got diminished breath sounds. He's not moving air as well. And so it may, and then the fact that he worked in casting metal for 40 years, he's at, at significant risk for silicosis. Although he did smoke for a long period of time, he may have some underlying or superimposed emphysema as well. But again, the main thing we're going to be biopsying here and looking at are these lesions, specifically these lesions you saw on the x-ray, these nodules, these calcified lymph nodes, and so that's what we're going to really, the question is really getting at. It's not essentially grabbing lung tissue, and you'll see, obviously, you could see some findings consistent with emphysema. And again, none of these really, these answer choices aren't, these are pretty specific. They're not referring to emphysema. So if we run through these, the first one here is golden brown fusiform rods resembling dumbbells or ferruginous bodies. These are characteristic for asbestosis. And so what happens is you have the asbestos that's taken in, macrophages ingest them and try to clear them and then the problem is, is that like I said the macrophages aren't the best at clearing those so you eventually get these deposited over time and they can actually get coated by iron and protein so that's why they kind of have these golden brown fusiform look because remember you kind of think of it as iron it, it kind of develops these golden brown fusiform rod uh, shape and so those are very characteristic for asbestos. Nodules surrounded by concentric layers of collagen this is classic for silicosis. So what happens is, again, you inhale silica over a pro prolonged period of time. The macrophages try to engulf those. Again, you know, it's a common theme. They release cytokines, which actually end up triggering fibroblasts to then just increase deposition of, in this case, collagen. Sometimes it's just connective tissue, but in, specifically in the case of silicosis, it's actually depositing collagen. That leads to fibrosis, whether you're depositing significant amounts of connective tissue or significant amounts of collagen, that's leading to pulmonary fibrosis, interstitial lung disease. And so this is the classic finding you'll see for uh, silicosis. And specifically, these concentric layers of collagen are surrounding silica particles because essentially the body you know, can't clear it. So it's essentially trying to just wall it off. Unfortunately, what happens is then you create fibrosis. Non-caseating granulomas and nodular infiltrates so this is characteristic of beryliosis. So beryllium actually, when it gets uh, inhaled, the macrophages again try to phagocytosim, but beryllium actually triggers macrophage apoptosis. And so that reduces clearance of beryllium, obviously. And then what happens is by triggering apoptosis, you have necrosis, lysis. These also contribute to an immune reaction. And again, you get fibrosis. These non-caseating granulomas can resemble sarcoidosis. One way you can differentiate these is, again, remember uh, beryllium exposure is in the aerospace and nuclear industry, so you definitely want to pay attention to patient work history. The other thing is sarcoidosis is more of a systemic disorder, so you're going to see other clinical findings outside of the lungs, so you want to pay attention to that. Uh, beryllium is, uh, exposure is confined typically to just the lungs. Then lastly here, you have alveolar macrophages with anthracotic pigment. Anthracotic pigment is just essentially this dark black pigment that results from coal dust. So again, the alveolar macrophages are trying to engulf the coal dust that's in, inhaled and clear it. Unfortunately, they're not able to clear it. And so when you do a biopsy, you will see these macrophages with this pigment. 
And again, this is characteristic for co-workers pneumoconiosis. So at the end of the day, this is a patient with prolonged exposure to silica by working in a foundry, casting metal for a long time that has developed silicosis. He had a biopsy done that showed nodules surrounded by concentric layers of collagen. All right, that's all I have for you this time. Be sure to check out all the Da Vinci Cases videos available on our YouTube channel and our website, dviacademy.com. The PDF notes for every Da Vinci Cases is also available on our website. Also be sure to check out our podcast, The Da Vinci Hour, where we interview attendings and residents across medicine to learn more about their experiences, their specialties, and to get their insights on navigating a career in medicine. You can find The Da Vinci Hour podcast on our website or any platform where podcasts are found. Lastly, you can find all of our video courses and corresponding outline form of books on our website. Don't forget to use the discount code DC20 for 20% off. 